I found myself writing these plays, historical plays, and I hadn't ever done that before, although I'd done a lot of research for them, seemingly my whole writing life, but never done anything with that research. Um, but when she passed, I just kept, you know, it, it became a sort of obsession writing about enslavement, you know, uh, and in a way my own history. And this play, um, Tituba, it, it, it focuses on the character who many of you may have, you know, she's a real person who was at the center of the Salem witchcraft trials. Um, and many you, of you will have en encountered her in Arthur Miller's play, The Crucible. And I wanted to take her out of the play and have her speak. Um, and when I was looking at it, it occurred to me that, you know, you have, uh, they used to talk about the stages of grief, and one of them was anger. And I think that somehow is pertinent to this extract that I'm going to read. John weeps as he tends to my back. Haven't you been whipped before, John? Not like this. I should have protected you. How could you? They would kill you. I would die fighting for you. They are afraid of us, John. They know that we have been done a terrible wrong and they are afraid that we will take our revenge. And one day we will. I do not want him to look at me. Tadewi Amitola. He blows on my back. His breath is warm, then cool. Tadewi Amitola. He strokes and kisses my hand. I cannot bear his touch. It is a relief when he is sent to fetch wood and I am left alone. I kick off the rags. I will not wear their clothes anymore. The whip shredded my disguise to reveal the black skin underneath. The blood continues to seep out of me. I'm too weak to move. I sink into the earth. Take me. Bury me under the dirt. Take me home. I open my eyes to a strange sight. The room is full of bubbles. They float through the air and make a curious music. I pop one with my fingers. As it pops, it releases a sound. My mother's voice. I pop another and another. Her voices fill the room. She chants my name, calls me back to her. Not the name given me by the traders, but the name she gave me, my real name. They cannot take my name. I have kept it locked away inside me. Not even John knows it. But now I unleash it into the room. I say it over and over again, send its power into my wounds, and a rapid healing ensues. Blood congeals, scars harden, clamping like armor onto my back. I say it louder so that it fills the space like a battle cry. I am myself again. I am no longer your tituba. I have slipped tituba off like a chrysalis. I watch her as she lies on the pallet. Look at her, a weakened, empty husk. Rest now, Tituba. I will breathe new life into you. I will make the reverend pay for what he has done to you. I will make them all pay for my mother's unending grief. You destroyed my mother, and now I will destroy yours. A crowd follows Constable Herrick, who makes his way to the Paris residence, charged with the arrest of Tituba Indian. The crowd goes bigger as Herrick leads me to the meeting house, already packed with spectators. I'm set before Mr. Hale, my confessor, who towers above me. 
the stricken girls, Anne, Betty, Mercy and Abigail, are in the charge of the elders. The only person who will not look at Tituba is the Reverend Paris. He is willing me to do as he bids. I have a part to play, and I play it well, darting looks around the court like a, fright, like a frightened animal. To those gathered in the meeting house, I appear to be childlike and inferior of mind. Hale stands, and I shiver as I look up at him, make myself small as he is tall. Titty B, what evil spirit do you have familiarity with? Say none, I tell myself. I must draw them in slowly. None. The reverend's hands are shaking. He presses them on his lap and examines a speck of blood on his finger. Why do you hurt these children? I do not hurt them. Who is it then? The devil for aught I know. Hale's eyes widen in surprise. Did you never see the devil? He is an expert in the extracting of confessions. I take advantage of his conceit. The devil came to me and bid me serve him. Hale thinks he is onto something. He is not to know that I am holding the reins in one hand and a whip in the other. With each movement I send him in the desired direct direction. He takes the bit. Who have you seen? Two women sometimes hurt the children. Who were they? Now, Tituba, now. You have the whip in your hand. You are the auctioneer. Pick a name, any name. Just as you were ripped at random from your mother's arms and from the life that you knew, now you will tear their lives apart. I look around the court, silence. They're waiting for me to speak. I name the names. Goody Osborne and Sarah Good. Hale turns to the gathering triumphant. He believes you. He believes you. Abigail darts a look at me. A moment passes as she realizes that she can no longer punish me by accusation. I am her mistress now. She breaks free of the elders and assumes her crude postures. The other girls follow suit. The court reacts. The spirit has descended and is manipulating the girls like puppets. Abigail, Betty, Mercy and Anne know that unless they do what I want them to, they will be lashed to near death by my confession. One by one, they corroborate my story and start to cry out. I see Martha Corey with the devil. I seen Dorcas Good with the devil. The Reverend Paris is shaking as though he too is possessed. He expected me to confess, but did not reckon that I would name names. Do not worry, Reverend. I will not name you. There is no need. In time, you will be annihilated by your own wickedness. I seen Rebecca Nurse with the devil. I seen Rachel Clinton with the devil. Bridget Bishop, John Lee, Sarah Cloyce, father against son, brother against sister. I could not have predicted this outcome. I seen Sarah Wilds with the devil. Perhaps I really am a witch. Certainly I can see the future. Farms go untended, cows and sheep perish, money lost. 24 men, women and babies killed. The suffering passed down for generations. Such is my power. I seen Mary Eastie with the devil. I seen George Burroughs with the devil. The Ver Reverend Paris will visit me in prison. He will sweet talk me to name the names of those on the church committee who oppose him. He will make promises he cannot keep, leave Tituba to rot in jail before she disappears from history. Oh yes, things will return to normal in time. But for the moment, Tituba is free and Salem is in chains. I seen Nehemiah Abbott with the devil. I seen Margaret Hawkes with the devil. Fly, Tituba, fly. Mother against daughter, wife against husband, and on and on, the madness consumes them. 
I stand at the back of the court and watch Salem destroy itself. Thank you.